this is Demonic Sweaters and today what I'm going to do is show you how to transmit patches from a Kawai K1 synthesizer to your computer using the program Mediox. Okay, so here we are again. Um, basically one of the first things you're going to want to do, obviously, is to download Mediox. Uh, you can get that from Mediox.com. It is totally free. It's a little tool that uh, is Windows uh, program. But I actually run it on Linux, and that's something you can see right here. I already have it open and running, and it works actually quite perfectly on Linux, believe it or not. As long as you have Wine installed on Linux, you can run uh, Mediox. So uh, if you're running Windows or if you're running Linux, uh, you can do this. There may be a way to do it on Mac. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't have a Mac, so I can't really test it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do after you install Mediox uh, is actually change a couple of settings um, or it won't work. Uh, well the first thing you need to do actually is to set up your MIDI interface. So in order to do that you're going to click on options and go to MIDI devices and you'll see here the uh, devices list that, that pops up. Mine I just use a cheap uh, MIDI cable, USB MIDI cable that I bought off of eBay and it recognizes it right away. I, I really don't even have to do anything. I just open this up and it's already there. So you see uh, MIDI cable one, and then down here, uh, outputs MIDI cable one. Um, if for some reason it doesn't automatically select it, you just click the one you want to use. Uh, if you click it again, it disconnects it. Uh, so once you have the MIDI interface selected that you want to use, you just click OK, and then you're good to go on that. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to do after you select your MIDI interface is, well first let's open up the SysX uh, window, which is, where is that thing? Here it is, under View, and then click on SysX. And what you'll see here, uh, it says SysX View and Scratchpad. It looks like a blank window and it's kind of confusing when you first see it, but it's actually pretty simple. Uh, what you want to do though before you can do anything here is change a couple of settings. So you're going to go to SysX and then go to Configure. Now, in order to get the K1 to be able to read the data that you send it from Midiox, you're going to have to change some of these numbers. Um, I think the default size here is something like 64 or something like that, but it's a lot smaller than what I have it set to right now. Um, so what you're going to do is under low level input buffers, you're going to change the size to 256. Uh, under number, you're going to select 32. And same with the low level output buffers, you're going to select 512 and 32. Down here in output timing, delay between buffers, change that to 200 milliseconds. Check the delay after F7 and have 200 milliseconds selected there. Do not use the auto adjust buffer delays if necessary. That does not seem to work, at least for me. Maybe it's because I'm using Linux. Um, maybe if you're using Windows, it would work. I don't know, but this has worked for me. So hopefully it will work for you as well. So once you have that, you just select OK. Now what you're going to need um, to, sub to send a patch, you actually need one already on your computer, which I have. So I will show you that. Um, I'm going to click on File and go to, or I'm sorry, I'm going to click on Command Window and Load File. And right here I have a couple of pads that I made. So let's just select the Airy Flute. Now you'll notice here you have uh, basically all these hexadecimals. Um, when you first look at this, you're like, what the hell is that? How am I supposed to figure out what I'm doing with all this? Um, and that's a good question because it's pretty confusing unless you have the manual, which I have, the manual for the K1. Um, in the manual for the K1, it explains what each of these are. Um, and basically, what this tells me is if we count over seven places from the first hexadecimal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's a zero, zero right there. That zero, zero, if that is either a zero, zero or a zero, one, that tells um, the K1 if this patch is going to be an internal patch, um, as in using the internal memory, or if it is a zero one, it will use the card for the K1. The number immediately following that, this zero seven, is what uh, part of the memory on the K1 is going to send that patch. 
or uh, what part of the memory it is stored on. Um, basically, the way this works is uh, it is since it's in hexadecimal, 07 is actually, um, if you know the K1's layout, you have the banks, which are A, B, C, D, and the 1 through 8 numbers. I believe that's what it is. Let me look at it. Right, so it's A, B, C, D, and 1 through 8. Um, so the way this works is you're going to count hexadecimal. Uh, so the first A1 would actually be 0, 0, because that's the first patch, and hexadecimal start as 0, 0. Um, the second patch is going to be 0, 1. Uh, third patch, 0, 2, and so on and so forth. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this patch to the uh, A6 position. So in order to do that, what I want to do is select this section here, which tells us which part of the memory it's going to go to. I'm going to delete that, or delete that 7, because that would put it in the sixth, the A6 position. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a when I say I'm just going to put it on 5, right? Or 6. No, I'm going to put it on 6. So I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, 5. And that will actually send it to A6. Now, that's all I need to do. I mean, this patch is ready to go. All I have to do is click on Command Window and then Send SysX. And now, hopefully, uh, that works. So let's take a look at the K1. And you'll see, here we are, uh, and it did work. We're on A6, and the patch that I sent, uh, sent to the K1 was the Airy Flute patch. So if we listen now. It's not one of the best sounding patches in the world, but you get the idea. Um, what you can do uh, is just, you know, it allows you to uh, transmit data from your computer to your synth which is really great because this synth is very old. It was made in the late 80s. And I'm using a modern, well, sort of modern computer. And I can, you know, basically save all of my patches. And that allows me to not only back up what I have on my synth, but it also allows me to create, like, gigantic libraries of different sounds and categorize them and uh, create different easily transmit patches um, to my synth to use live. Okay, now that we saw how to uh, send a patch to the K1, let's go ahead and uh, receive one. And this is basically the same process, you just do it in reverse, and it's pretty simple. Um, except for this time you don't need to worry about uh, changing any numbers because they're just coming from the synth. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on SysX and then Receive Manual Dump. Basically what that does is this just puts uh, MIDIOX into a waiting state waiting for the manual dump on the uh, to come from the synth. And to do that, we actually need to go back to the K1. Okay, so here we back are back on the K1, and uh, what I'm going to do is just push the uh, system button, and you'll see what that does here. Uh, the first thing that comes up is MIDI, and I'm going to press the plus key, or I'm sorry, the minus key, and that will uh, change it to transmit, and then we're just going to press um, system again, and system again. We'll keep going through the system until it gets to MIDI dump execute. Uh, once you see the screen, you're just gonna click yes, or I'm sorry, push yes on the K1. Then it'll ask you if you're sure. Say yes again. Now it says busy and completed. Now if we come back over here to the screen, you'll see 28, 25 bytes received. And that means that the patch was sent. And if we just click on done, now there's that data that just came from the synth. Cool, right? Now what you can do is highlight all of this and then just click file. Or I'm sorry, click... Where is it? Oh yes, this is kind of weird. Uh, what you do to save them is you highlight it all in black and then you right click it and then click on save as and then you can save this as whatever you like um, I think what I just did there uh, I'd have to go back and look but I think I just did the full uh, dump which saves the entire uh, basically this entire bank of single patches um, yeah I believe that's what I did because of all these uh, hexadecimals you see it's a little too big to be a single patch 
But basically, I, hopefully this will give you the idea of what you can do with MIDI-AUX uh, as far as storing and transmitting patches um, to the K1. You most likely be able to do this with a lot of other synths as long as you have the uh, data that you need to be able to basically translate um, what numbers and items you need to modify in your SysX data in order for it to work. Um, that can be a little bit challenging if you don't have the manual. Uh, if you don't, then basically you're going to have to um, search around online, try to find uh, the technical data for whatever synth you're using. You could, I mean, probably in MIDIOX, there's probably a way where you could use the actual uh, monitoring features of MIDIOX to figure all that stuff out. Um, I mean, it has a lot of features that, like I said, I don't really know how to use them, but it's pretty extensive. It's been around a long time, and whoever wrote it, or the developers of MIDIOX, definitely did an amazing job with it. It is a great piece of software. Uh, it works pretty flawlessly, even in Linux, like I said. So, yeah, it's cool. And like I said, I'm going to put the uh, patches that I have for my synth, for my K1, here on the, the description of the video. You'll be able to download all of those, as well as uh, a link to MIDIOX. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, uh, just feel free to post it in the comments section and let me know. All right, thanks for watching.